Each fall, as combines roll into the field to begin another harvest, emotions are running high for America's corn farmers. They're excited for the job at hand, yet anxious to learn if all of their hard work during the year has paid off. The moment of truth begins to unfold as data starts to display on their yield monitor. Will the numbers on the screen be high, low, or somewhere in between? It turns out that 2017 was a year that didn't disappoint. USDA estimates U.S. corn farmers harvested a record yield of 176.6 bushels per acre. It was a record year as well for the National Corn Growers Association National Corn Yield Contest. Now in its 53rd year, five national entries surpassed 400 plus bushels per acre, tying a mark set just last year. Meanwhile, the 18 winners in six production categories averaged more than 386 bushels per acre. One farmer in this year's contest did even better. For the third time, David Hula of Charles City, Virginia established a new world yield record. His entry of 542 bushels per acre in the no-till, strip-till, irrigated class topped his old mark of 532 bushels per acre set in 2015. And it bests his first record yield back in 2013 by a whopping 88 bushels per acre. That's an increase of nearly 20% in only four years. To push yields to ever higher levels, Hula credits scouting and uniform emergence. Things that we've had really good success with that kind of push our yields, you know, we're trying to watch the crop. We do a lot of scouting, we do a lot of tissue samples, so we can rank how our crop is progressing over time. You know, if you start off this year and then you find yourself where you had a, a limiting factor, then you can't fix that sometimes. You have to wait till the following year to build upon that. So we do a lot of tissue sampling to catch that. Then we realize that getting the crop planted when conditions are right. The next most important thing is we've typically been focusing on seed spacing, which that is get that good picket row fence stand. That's important. But if you can get your corn to emerge uniformly. And when I say uniformly, I'm not saying the whole field come up with so many hours after the first spike comes out of the ground, but get the neighboring plants to come up within four to 12 hours after the first plant spikes out of the ground. When you can do that, all your ears will be the same height, all your leaves are identical, so your crop is growing in harmony, and then there's no plant-to-plant -plant competition. That's exciting. When I look back and say, hey, when did I realize I had a good crop? It's when I went out and monitored how our crop was emerging. Madison, Alabama farmer Stuart Sanderson has been entering the National Corn Yield Contest for several years. He has taken a page from Hula's playbook, as well as advice from other contestants to boost yields on Henderson farms. Well, one of the things that uh, some people have told us before, you need to be best friends with your crop. You need to spend a lot of time with it. You need to walk and look and examine your fields. And so that was the very first thing we did. We learned from the top corn producers in this state or in, in the country about how to spend time in the crop and how to go out there and be selective with the tissue samples, selective with the soil samples. So that was the priority right there. We, we, we accepted a, or started a whole new mindset of producing corn. We started spending time from before the seed went in the planter all the way through post harvest. And so it starts in the very beginning days with emergence and everything else. You start walking your fields and you start looking and you start analyzing. So little tips like that, that here's the key, did not cost us a dime. Improving production is what drives the National Corn Yield Contest. It emphasizes innovation both from growers and technology providers. And it encourages farmers to test different practices, technologies, and techniques to achieve higher yields. For Hula, trying new ideas is a long-standing practice that pays big dividends. So we've learned certain things to trick the plant to um, give it to allow it to express its most yield uh, potential. My granddad was one, and, and my dad in particular, he was an observer, as we all, all good farmers are great observers. He saw that, hey, when the weeds mature, the seeds are ripe, but the plant's still growing. 
So we tried to mimic that in their corn production. And when you can do that, when you can go out there and harvest corn at 19% moisture and the leaf next to the ear is still green, well, you have got something going on and that, that's exciting. So when you get to that level, you know, thumbs up to you because that will be a good day. Sanderson has also incorporated new production practices on his farm thanks to his participation in the National Corn Yield Contest. One of the biggest things that we learned from going to the contest early is that we needed to adapt something, take us to the next level. We were always down here, we planted corn and we grew corn and we harvested corn, that was it. But the more we got involved with the National Corn Growers Contest and the more that we got involved with growers, more really progressive growers from around the country that had already surpassed the 300 bushel mark in irrigated corn, the 250 bushel mark in dryland corn, we started asking them what they did. And so the ideas of the, the two by two, the in furrow, really going after an aggressive micronutrient package, that is stuff that all come out of conversations that we had while we were at the National Corn Growers Competition uh, competing and interacting with these people. So it's this networking with other corn farmers that makes the National Corn Growers Association National Corn Yield Contest more than just a friendly competition. And it's a big reason why the contest will continue to be the association's most popular program for members. And having a chance to go to the Commodity Classic, you get to learn and create relationships with farmers across the country and you, know, you pick and choose things that they're doing and you try to incorporate it in, into your farm and you know you, you learn from your mistakes and then you you know you get to appreciate the successes that you've had. One of the added benefits and it is a very good added, added benefit the National Corn Growers Contest is it's a family environment and they encourage family to be involved and so last year uh, for the first time, my cousin and I, we both won two state titles in, in Alabama here. We, we were able to take our wives with us, and uh, we had no idea that they would absolutely fall in love with the National Corn Growers Contest and got there and saw just how many wives were there, and they really developed some, what I would say was lifelong friendships now. And so it was interesting, on the flight back, they both looked at us and said, said hey boys, next year, bigger, better, we want to be back. And so that's what we tried to do. So now we've got our wives out here walking the fields with us, helping us, saying, is there anything we can do to help you get these numbers uh, to get us back to the National Corn Growers Contest? So